Hey, Double Eagle, it was so fun to see your imaginary animals that you came up with last week. Ah, and now I'm excited because next week is the science fair. Now, usually the science fair is held in the gym and everyone brings in these big project boards, but we can't do that this year. So instead, everyone can submit their projects online. There will also be an online meeting where I will be doing a hands-on science activity with you. All you will need is a balloon. If you don't have one, you can pick one up from the school sometime this week before the science night. I know sometimes it's hard to think of science fair ideas, so I'm going to help you. And if you want, you can turn one of your ideas into a science fair project. In fact, that's my favorite part of the science fair, learning about science from questions that you have. That brings us to the first part of a good science fair experiment, a question. I don't know about you, but I have lots of questions. How would a helium balloon behave in zero gravity? What's the best way to make boiled eggs? How can I get birds to live in my birdhouse? Would a tank be faster on sand or on mud? Is soccer or basketball more fun? But for a science experiment, it needs to be a question that we can test and measure. Unfortunately for me, that means my questions about zero gravity and tanks will have to wait for later because that's not something I can test. My question about the birdhouse is interesting, but it's not really something I can measure easily. The question about soccer and basketball is really more of an opinion question, so that doesn't work for a science fair experiment either. So, I'm going to try to answer my boiled egg question with an experiment. First, I should make sure this is a question that I can measure. What is the best way to boil eggs? Well, for me, the best way is the way that makes it so I can peel them the fastest. So I'm going to try three different ways and time how long it takes to peel the egg each way. Then, whichever way is the fastest will be the best way. Next, I'm going to make a hypothesis, a guess. My hypothesis is that the one where you poke a little hole in the shell will be the best, because maybe the water can get in and between the egg and the shell and make it easier to peel. That's my guess. It's okay if your hypothesis is wrong, we just want to find evidence one way or the other. The first way is poking a hole in the bottom of the shell. The second is doing a small crack, just like that. And the third way is doing nothing. That's our control. We only want to change one thing at a time. So the only thing that's different about these eggs is whether they have a hole or a crack. They're going to cook for the same amount of time in the same pot and cool the same way also. Then we get to do my favorite part, performing the experiment. The steps we take to do the experiment are called the procedure. We want to write down our steps so that if someone else was curious about our experiment, they could follow those same steps and hopefully get the same results. That way they don't have to just believe us, they can try it for themselves. We also try something several times to make sure our results are repeatable. If we only try something one time, something random could affect our results. For example, what if one egg has a really thin shell? Or what if one egg bumps against the side and gets cracked and spills all over the place? We're going to try this with five eggs of each type, so that if we get something random in one or two of them, it's okay, we should still be able to get good results. Depending on how random your results are, you may need to repeat what you're doing five, ten, or even twenty times. After boiling all the eggs and cooling them, I timed how long it took Sapphire to peel each one and wrote it down. After we perform our experiment, we want to be able to show the results in a way that other people can understand. I'm going to make a chart here with uh, how long it took to peel each kind of egg. Then I'm going to turn it into a graph. One easy way to make a graph is to put your data into a spreadsheet. You can do this on Google Drive by going to the File menu, then going to New Spreadsheet. In the first column, I'm going to put egg 1, egg 2, egg 3, all the way down to egg 5, since those are the eggs I'm testing. In this corner, I'll have a label to show what these numbers mean. Then in these columns, I'll put the different times for each of the eggs for each cooking method. The times for the eggshells with a hole will go here, then the cracked ones, and then the normal ones. After my data is in, I can click and drag to highlight all my data, then go to the Insert menu and choose Chart. The computer will make a nice graph of my data for me. I can pick different types of graphs and use this Customize menu to make it look how I want. The last part of an experiment is the conclusion. What does your data tell you about your original question? In our case, if we look at the different amounts of times it took, we can see that poking a hole or making a crack did not really seem to make much of a difference in how long it took to shell the egg. So my hypothesis was wrong. Poking a hole in the egg does not seem to help it. At the end of this video, I'll show you what my Google Slides look like for this project as an example. So for your STEM activity, I want you to come up with a question that you can answer with an experiment. 
And now I want this to be a different question. Don't do something about boiled eggs, that's what I did. Do something else that you are interested in. Maybe you have a question about Legos, or cookies, or soccer, or bicycles. Maybe you're interested in dogs, or flowers. Once you have a question, think if there's some way to test your question, where you could measure the results. If there's a way to measure it, it might make a good science experiment. If not, you might need to think of some more questions. Today, please write or tell your question and how you could answer it with an experiment. If you can actually do the experiment, that's great. If you can do the experiment and report on it for the science fair, that's even better. But at least write down your question, hypothesis, and the procedure you could use to do the experiment to try to answer your question. Then share it with your class. I hope you stay safe, have fun, and keep experimenting.